Let's take a look at how we use constraints uh, in Parafact. Let me make an example. And again, we'll use the amino acid data. But this time, let me just look at sample 4 and 5. So that would be a 2 by 201 by 61 data set. And let me fit a Parafac model with three components because I still have three analytes. So even though I only have two samples, I still need a three component model. Now I happen to know that there is a problem here in this particular model because two of the chemical analytes, oh, sorry, I used the wrong data set. Let me redo that. I need to take the right one. Here we are. Now I know that there will be a problem here because I have three chemicals in these two samples. But two of these chemicals, they have a constant ratio in concentration. So they go up and down together in these two samples. And that is the one thing we need to be able to fit Parafact models. That is that the concentrations should vary independently. And they don't vary independently, or at least very, very little so. And that will give us a problem, uh, or give Parafact a problem. So the algorithm uh, will have difficulties finding a meaningful solution. Now while we wait for the model to converge, let's just take a look here at what it says. Now you can see here that it says that I am estimating A, B and C, mode 1, 2 and 3, unconstrained. And this is what we're going to change after we have fitted the model here. We're going to try to change these into non-negativity in order to see if we can help the problem uh, that way. So let's see now. You can see that the weight bar is pretty confused uh, and that happens sometimes. It's not actually possible to predict exactly uh, when the model is going to end uh, because we don't actually know uh, how the, this, the loss function will develop over time. So it's more of an indication than an actual prediction of how long it's going to take. But hopefully we will uh, converge pretty soon. You can see that it takes much longer to fit the model now than if we only fit the model uh, or if we fit the model to all five samples. So mathematically this is more difficult uh, to find a solution here. And already uh, based on that, that's an indication that the model might be problematic. Um, that's one of the signs you will see of a problematic model is that it's often uh, take takes long to calculate. Now I am an impatient man, so let me stop it now. So we don't really get the solution. We get some interim version that we can just take a look at. Now you can see there are some negative parts here and here, and it doesn't really look nice. Well, and I can tell you that even the real solution, if we convert to the end, would have the same problem. So let's try and do constraints. Now, we can look into the help of Parafac and see how we do constraints. I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm just going to show you how you do this. As we have explained earlier, we can get the default options for any function in PLS toolbox by typing the name of the function and then options, like this. And if I take a look now, I can see that one of the options I have is the constraints. And there are constraints for each mode. So let me do this. And I'll use the tap to complete this. It was a cell array. So these are constraints for mode 1. And the type is the main field. 
it says unconstrained but I can change this now to non-negativity and then it'll impose non-negativity in mode 1 so let me do that it's important to spell right otherwise the algorithm will not recognize it. I also want non-negativity in mode 2 and I want it in mode 3 and in general when we do non-negativity we usually do it in all modes or none of them. So now I have specified that I want non-negativity in all three modes. So let me now do the model again but including the options. And now it's a good idea to check that you spelled it right and we can see here that we did impose non-negativity in all three modes. So now the algorithm is changing from an unconstrained uh, regression to a non-negativity constrained regression. Sometimes that actually speeds up the calculations because it helps defining the problem uh, better uh, but not always. It's, it's really difficult to predict. But let's see what happens here. Before we stopped the algorithm after 300 iterations and it still hadn't converged, now we only took 81 iterations. The fit will be worse than the unconstrained model per definition because I allow less, so it has to be the same or worse. But hopefully it's very little uh, the difference uh, and hopefully we just removed um, some artifacts and indeed it seems like we have a nice model compared to what we had before. You can see that the axis here is really forced to zero at some points. Let me change the axis just a little bit here. Oops. Ah, that was wrong. Sorry. I wanted minus. Here we are. Now here you can see that the non-negativity really forces the parameters to zero. Not just by setting negative ones to zero, it's an iterative process, but it is a, a real active constraint that changes uh, your model. But in this particular case, it actually does seem to help um, fix the problem in an indirect way because the real problem was the problem with the concentrations. Uh, so the real solution would be to get more samples and we know that that works because when I build the model on all five samples I get a nice solution. But in case I couldn't get more samples, this could be an indirect way of sort of minimizing the influence of this problem. Now let me just show you what I should perhaps have shown a long time ago. And that is that Parafact is actually available as a graphical user interface. And that might be a bit more convenient for some. This is the window and we can load a data set in X here. So a freeway array like this. And it tells us that only certain types of pre-processing are defined for multi-way data. This user interface is for any kind of analysis, not just Parafact. Uh, so it just tells us that only certain types of pre-processing are available. We don't really want any pre-processing of our fluorescence data. We just want to fit a free component model, for example. So we can select free and fit the model. And the reason I want to show you that you can do it uh, in here is, well, it might be easier, um, but also here we have the opportunity to define options in what could be a simpler manner. So for example here, we can set the options for mode 1 
and we can define if we should have orthogonality, non-negativity, etc. Like that. And we can save that and run the model, and it will then run with non-negativity in the first mode. So the user interface makes it possible to have a slightly more user-friendly way of setting the options. I prefer the scripts, but that's because Oh, sorry, the command uh, line, but that's because I can then make small scripts where I can automate everything and redo everything uh, with slight changes without having to do it manually. Um, but that's a matter of taste. <laughs>